Ashra Doji. My brain's adjusting to how much I need to think about now. Think about One Piece? I need to think about One Piece, too. I never stopped thinking about One Piece. From the moment I started, it's, it's never le left the old noggin. At any point, you could probably ask me a One Piece thing, and I'd be ready to shoot back something. At who is the oldest known character in all of One Piece? Who is, who is the oldest? Yeah. Freha? Uh, nope. Ooh, that's a good oh, guess. Well, uh, the, 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 there was the one really old giant, the like yeah. super old giant, like, I don't know if he was the chief or something, but there was a very old man giant. Yeah. That said, I don't, that said, I don't know if we have seen him alive, so I don't know, like, because <laughs> I think that was in Big's flashback. Was, oh. Okay. So, yes, he is confirmed still alive. I mean, presumably Joy Boy existed before him, but we don't know. Yeah, I was about know. to say, is Zinesha older than that guy? Oh, yeah, there we go. Zinesha actually. Ooh, okay, okay. I would say confirmed. And then, like, not really any kind of confirmation on stuff, but Emu? Yeah, yeah. It seems like Emu's, uh, Emu's a time. little baby. I'm going to say Emu replaced someone and is oh, like, you the, know what? Probably. Is the right. cranky younger leader. Ooh. There's that's my deep big prediction. Boom. Wow. We're new... predicting things today. Yeah. I <laughs> we don't exactly know what we're going to be predicting. None of us really came in with a with a really big yeah, plan. Yeah, last time yeah. we sort of had the the whole we were going to rank arcs things. This time I was like, we can talk about like what's going on in the manga, but like we're all kind of in the same boat of like the this arc sort of just starting and really doesn't have a lot of stuff for us to <laughs> springboard into pre like big specific predictions. So I, I think this is going to be a more free form, just kind of one PC conversation. Did want to shout out fan letter and thought it was super good. I don't know how nitty gritty we want to get about it, but I really liked it. And I definitely think people should like check it, it out. Holy fan letter it felt was like, great. It, it felt like something that they would show right before a movie. Yes, <laughs> yeah. it, it felt like a, it felt like, like a movie or yeah, you know, movie like quality, a, like a little OVA yeah. thing. Because yeah, like every like it looked beautiful. Like it's funny because like when it was like I think there was like a you know the next time on the week before on One Piece or something. I was just kind of like this looks like a weird little thing. I'm curious what this will be. But then like at the announcement of the anime going on break afterwards, I was kind of like <laughs> bummed. I was like, oh man, like so we're gonna get like kind of a a dry period and this is what we're going out on okay this like whatever this is gonna be uh, and then it turned out to be amazing so i was like all right good call this is a <laughs> this is a great way to kind of bookend this part of the anime if we're gonna start like giving giving it yeah. more time yeah i think so the announcement that came out in case anyone's unfamiliar has has been living under a metaphorical rock from manga and anime news one piece is going on a break from its standard story of continuing egghead island and instead they're going to be doing a recut and remastered version of fish main island and to kind of start that off they did a special called fan letter and megumi ishitani the, the best director for all of one piece it seems <laughs> and probably just an most anime people in general was in charge of making that at least you know, direction of it. And it turned out so good. And I think it was made just to, I don't know, make the transition a little bit easier for people who weren't. Yeah, I kind of put you it. like in the in the time frame like of the yeah. Fishman Island stuff and like return to Sabaody and stuff. That. Okay. Yeah. So what if okay, what if they just cover up to Fishman Island for this? And whenever we get up to they might do the same thing with like, you know, Elbath whenever yeah. we get there. Yeah, the assumption is and I like this idea. I'm not sure how happy other people are because there's lots of people complaining that they're going. That One Piece is going on break, even though I don't see a problem really. But the assumption is that the anime goes on break from its modern story and goes back and redoes an arc, and then it'll hop back into the main story for a little while, but then take another break and, and like after like a year or something, and then they'll remake another arc. So well, I I want to know. <laughs> What if they do this kind of thing when, like, if they were to cut recover, like, Punk Hazard? If we got, like, a, le a fan letter episode uh -oh. of Punk <laughs> Hazard, like, yeah, one we're gonna of, a fan like, letter for every Laws, new arc, yeah. Yeah, uh, we see and one of Caesar's, or maybe one, <laughs> following one of the kids. No, yeah, uh, I was gonna say, we, we get the, we get a really, like, gritty, sad perspective of the giant kids on punk hazard so when that anime part starts and you are already invested on like <laughs> these kids need to get out of here fun 
Yeah. yeah, I imagine they probably like want to do like if that if that uh, is the strategy of the kids like like getting abducted. Yeah, yeah. If the, if the if that is the strategy of just hopping back and forth between old and remastering or remastering old and the new stuff, then they probably would do a special tra- to transition it for each one. It doesn't necessarily need. It's not necessarily going to be the same thing every time. But yeah, it would be cool to see. Like just a, just a fun little episode, just giving extra context to things before an arc starts. Well, it goes like it it is like Fishman Island into Punk Hazard, right? Like that is the next phase. Yeah. Yes. So like that already has kind of like a perfect transition of like we we get to Punk Hazard or see Punk Hazard in the distance, and that makes us think of Vega Punk. Now we jump forward to Egghead again. <laughs> we do a bunch of stuff in Egghead. And I don't know how you double that back to Vegapunk, but it, or, or back to Punk Hazard, other than I guess with Vegapunk. But uh, yeah, you see, we already we kind of got we already got that transition there. You can go back and forth there. That's a good pivot point. Yeah. I just need them to redo Dress Rosa. I really like that arc, but the anime I feel like does it very very badly. Yeah, well, yeah, we talked about that in our tier list, but Dress Rosa <laughs> is a very very solid arc that. Nobody can appreciate because the anime and the weekly reading experience for both anime and manga readers was, was kind of kind of difficult to get through, which I get. It's just got so much in it. Yeah, it was pretty long. Like, how long was, like, Alabasta? That was probably, what, 60 like, chapters, maybe? I thought it was, like, 100. I don't, I don't think it was 100. I don't have a firm grasp on chapter breakdown, but I, I in my head dressrosa feels bigger than alabasta i think by a pretty wide margin yeah yeah by like by a this bit old ass image. okay yeah it was 63 chapters was alabasta so yeah dressrosa was just a fair bit longer and a lot of the pages are a lot more dense for later one piece stuff as well but did it say or do much more than alabasta with all that extra time it did a lot what are you talking about <laughs> i'm just you know prodding for you know, talking points. No. I'm not here to defend a side. No, you need to you you need to go see, watch our tier list again because we definitely covered all of that. Yeah, see, I already covered all my thoughts on that. I'm just, just you go know. to go to readyornot.net, which is not a real URL. And, yeah, don't go there. That's and you, search. We do not tier list one piece. whatever happens on the dot <laughs> that's run by monsters. I still think Jai should be number one. Jai was close to number one. That was a <laughs> contentious point, if not I recall. Close enough, but uh, two. <laughs> That was that was the big One Piece news was that break and I'm totally for it. I know some people are against it. How do, how do you guys feel about it? Oh, I'm totally down for it. We're like seeing a bunch of the stuff just reanimated with this fun little Wano filter. I think is what they were calling it. Yeah. Or whatever they said. Are they they're fixing the pacing too, right? Yeah. The yes, when Fishman Island like was like fifty something episodes. Too. The re-edit is going to be twenty something. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Half. Yeah, well, that's uh, the, that was the the pacing at the time. Yeah, yeah, I I definitely think this is a good idea. Kind of anything that can let One Piece just look better more often, I am in favor of. Yeah, and then on top of that, like, yeah, giving it like it's going to be confusing. I feel like that's like a fair issue to take. Is I do think it's going to kind of be this new annoying wrinkle of like. So yeah. it's like I watched Fishman Island. Yeah, but did you watch like the right Fishman Island? Yeah. And then yeah. like. You know, like it's like, that. I want to watch Dragon Ball Z. Well, okay, well, here's the right way to do it. You watch the new one coming out by Netflix, and then you you wait. Yeah, watch years. watch this. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, wa- watch, the, watch the wit piece. Then when you get caught up there, then you jump over to the One Piece logs. Then after that, you shift over to One Pace. And then finally, you'll get caught up to where you're just watching weekly with the rest of us. But like, it's just going to be this whole thing. Toei is being forward thinking for the first time in One Piece's anime history. Like, at at least at some point, you'll have just Wit Piece for the first half and the Toei One Piece logs, I think is what they're being branded as. Yeah, I think that's for the second half until you hit modern, which the pacing is hopefully going to be fixed for modern stuff as well because of these breaks that they're going on. Yeah. So that hopefully uh, things in like five ish years, maybe even it'll maybe, maybe even <laughs> we'll uh, eventually hit some equilibrium point. Yeah. Just as the <laughs> like, think about that. Like, like here, let me blow your mind real quick. What if the anime and manga end on the same week? Oh uh, man! Holy shit! <laughs> Wait, how could the anime and manga end on the same week though? Uh, don't worry the about staff it. Just, I'm just, I'm just saying. Time. Wouldn't Did it be I, crazy? Have I ever if? publicly talked about the story? 
with the the Toei guy. I don't know if you have. You can go ahead and tell that story. Oh here, I man, I've, I don't know if I've told you either, how, Ben. How Tyler got to be real world <laughs> Luffy. How how you had your moment in the Sabani oh, bar. Oh man, yeah, I had. I I was so. Yeah, I I yelled at Rayleigh or at uh, Sanji <laughs> yeah. practically. <laughs> A few years ago, they're not a company anymore. I can talk about this. I was with a, I was with Funimation. I was out at LA doing like photos for their events, and I was with their press guy who like they have to entertain a bunch of the people that, that gets flown out. And we go to dinner place, and the head of Toei at the time, Lisa, who at the same weekend like gave you trouble, Grant, which I think is so funny because like she came up to the table at the TFS table and was like, you guys can't sell this. And then oh, like the same right. night, I forgot that I'm was like the same partying week. with her. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot that, that happened. And she brings in like the director of Toriko, who's directed a few episodes of One Piece. And I, I just got into One Piece. I got, just got caught up to the manga. So like, I'm deep into it. I'm really pogging off. What was uh, happening at this point? Like what, what? I think this is 2018. I don't think they were to big mom yet. I think they had just gotten okay. Because I I have like no frame of reference for like when things happened in One Piece. Like I don't know what eras are different. This like, is like what years what, correlate to what? What year did I go with you? I feel like that was like 2017, 2018, somewhere around there. Okay, I think it was like the 20th anniversary, or like the 20th anniversary was in the next year. So okay, but anyway, what, so yeah. You're, but I'm just deep into it and stuff, and I'm just I'm loving talking about One Piece. And like, he's kind of quiet and I do like, but we just start talking about that and he's real drunk. And at a point he just goes, so I know what the, the one piece is. Do you want to know? And like, <laughs> and I'm just like, no, I'm here for the ride, please. In retrospect, right I don't answer. believe him. I like, don't, think I don't know if he would. Like, I'm sure there's, like, some insurance Toei has. In an effort to not get him in trouble, let's all just assume, everyone in chat, everyone in the comments, just assume <laughs> that he was lying because he wanted to impress Tyler, who yeah. is a very, uh, who's a very domineering figure. Yeah, I, um, I'm betting, so I'm betting he would, like, him. if you had said, yeah, yeah, tell me, he would have just been like, I'm just kidding. Like, I or think just, just didn't play into up. his bluff. Yeah. I, I don't remember his response, but I wish it was something like, okay, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> that's the now it is now the right I will answer, tell yeah. you. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell you, but now that you've told me you don't want to know, I will give you the secret. Yeah, now that you, now me, now I like, can open this so whenever you can you also want. be cursed. Now that you prize the adventure over the treasure, I can now train you <laughs> Here's the treasure. in the ways of hockey. <laughs> yeah, and then you unlocked a real world devil fruit. There you go. That's you can no longer swim, but you do have superpowers. Yeah. And then he ran out of cigarettes, and then I ran a, a mile to go to the closest <laughs> gas station and ran back with him. <laughs> like, here you go, dude. Man. But yes, uh, all, that to say, all that to say I'm very pro anime break. Definitely. Yes, it. absolutely. I don't, the thing is, I don't, I don't really watch the anime. I only keep up with the manga, and it's like, I'm very impressed with all the animation that has been coming out that I see. But I just don't have like the patience for it. I just keep seeing it and I keep being like, all right, let's keep, let's keep it moving. And I just cannot like suspend my disbelief of this pacing for whatever reason. Maybe just because I complained about it so much, so much <laughs> to so many friends. It's gotten too deep to your core. I'll like, I basically, I don't feel like I, you know, I will watch it on a weekly basis, but it, for me, it is like, like now that I'm caught up, it is much less like I'm super focused on it and more yeah. just like, it's just like this weekly ritual. I'm just going to throw one piece on. I'm going to look at it when I know interesting stuff's happening, but you know, for the most part, just kind of check in, check out type stuff. Yeah. And then like, you know, maybe go a week or two without it and then catch up or something. But, but yeah, it's like, especially just once I started reading the manga, like watching week to week felt like this like what am i what am i crazy like unless it's gonna be a big moment yeah i have yeah, kind of been like that like i have not i won't go like oh it's saturday i better go check on the one piece anime but egghead yeah. is probably my favorite arc like oh yeah like from what i've seen of it it's it just animated splendidly like throughout it seems like even with the lower points i'm assuming it's done just fine yeah i, I feel like it has basically looked great across the board and then i feel like They've definitely like, and, and it's one of those things where I feel like it's crazy, like knowing just how big One Piece is that I feel like it has not gotten this treatment longer and like in the long scheme, 
Yeah, that was what's but so frustrating about. It. But it's just Lana, like they really now. Insane. I feel like know when to go. Like, hey, you know what? This fight, like, like just for like a specific example, like I feel like Luffy versus Luchi on Egghead was like not that big in the manga. Like it was like you know maybe <laughs> like a chapter, like at most. And I feel like it was just like not a huge thing. But then the anime just goes like insane with animating it, and like yeah. it just goes like like just like just bonkers and it's just like that is the show and series deserves that it deserves to have these moments like elevated even if they're like smaller in the grand scheme moments just because it's the biggest freaking thing in the world just throw the money at it just do yeah. it yeah that's, like, no I'm, one's I'm gonna complain about it before wano and i i even like i have a tendency as an editor i have a tendency to want to make cuts to things and I did this for Dragon Ball Z with the Kai stuff as well. I just made like a, a marathon video for myself because I could just easily paste everything in and know how to cut everything. Just make it flow smoother without those what ad, ad break things without mm -hmm. any credits or next time dons or whatever. And so I just made it whole like marathon videos. And so I started making a one piece Kai like cut and I shared it with some people and it got some traction, but it was never as big as one pace, obviously, but it was for the dub, which is what distinguished mm. it and the cool thing about that is funimation's releases for their dvds were mixed in 5.1 surround sound and the sound effects and music were on the left and right speakers whereas the voices came out of the center speaker so what i could do is i could fully take out the the background music and actually the sound effects were also with the voices so i could just fully cut out the background music and put it in at my own pace exactly yeah, so if you so like cut... re recut scenes it's not jarring whenever the, the song yeah the music happen. doesn't have to cut out at, at, with every cut i made and so nice. I, I did a lot of work with that i edited up to the end of any's lobby which is insane amount of stuff to edit yeah that. holy shit <laughs> that's that's quite a bit man yeah some of it wasn't good quality but that was just a lot of fun to do and i'm, I'm glad i can just like go back and watch my cut without hopefully without too much embarrassment someday and just be like ah i can watch this at a decent pace that's nice <laughs> you have the definitive early one piece cut <laughs> for the dub which a lot of people don't like but i'm fine with it look you'll just send that into crunchy roll anonymously just release this <laughs> if only but now that whip piece is coming out my i have high hopes for it i really really hope it's yeah i'm looking it's forward to, be to what i was looking to when we start now. getting some some real looks at that because early Toei stuff, they call it the golden era, where it's just like up to Alabasta. But a lot of the animation in that is so janky. Like it is. There are definitely some like really good looking parts of it. But yeah, I feel like there's I, a lot of it. That... I couldn't find too much. Like as far as like actual move movement goes, as far as animation goes, like the best I could find in the first f like three or four arcs was Zoro unsheathing his swords in the uh, in the Seer Village arc. Because one of the yeah, people, really one of the animators there cheating. was really into Zoro. But everything else was just so choppy. And it was just like, it's, it's that tweeting kind of thing. They're just moving cells across the page and they're not animating hardly anything. It was rough. In my head, I feel like I'm remembering like good looking fights in like either Arlong Park or Baradier. But yeah, I might also be thinking of like the times they redid those. <laughs> I think so. you might be thinking of that. I don't recall very many good animations for that era i i honestly don't i think like luffy's kick looked good but i whatever he like the gum gum axe but i don't i might be playing that up in my head possibly i mean i might be wrong too but i just remember going back and watching the first few arcs and being like there's almost nothing here none of this is worth saving says ben the arbiter of quality <laughs> I, it's worth saving. I, I don't want to get the archivist t mindset yeah. people my, mad, but it's it's not worth... Like, I when people said, oh, I hate the idea that they're remaking One Piece because that'll just invalidate people the previous watch one. people will watch that. And there's, there's some arguments to be made for that type of thing happening, like for remakes happening, especially for people who say they like want to remake, I think the example was Gundam, because then it's just like, that, that's really weird. Gundam has always existed as only this anime remaking it kind of does in in a way invalidate it but the argument for one piece is that it's an adaptation and it's a poor adaptation it deserves a different adaptation if if there's value to it i think that's fair i would agree me too
Someday I'm going to argue against one of those people. And I know someone through through my friend Mercury Falcon, and uh, <laughs> and I wanted to I wanted to argue him with with him so much when he was coming out and say saying how the original's fine. Don't don't remake it. Do you think the piece will have a new English dub? Probably. Like maybe not entirely. Like I don't think they'll replace everyone, but I bet like at least a like a few characters probably will. I would hope so personally. I I would love a fresh a fresh new cast. I am I'm always out with the old and with the new mindset for this stuff. I kind of Yeah, I specifically mean like the straw hats when I mean cast. Yeah. I'd personally be into it. I think a lot of the cast, like I think all of the straw hats except for Luffy are nearly perfect casting. Oh, and I don't think Chris Sabat's perfect as Zoro, but like he's a good actor so it works. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think he's a perfect fit for Zoro. But everyone else is practically perfect uh, fit for the characters. I've honestly never, all right, may, maybe stepping on some toes here. I've never been big on Eric Vale's Sanji. I think he's like just. Like, oh yeah, you know just, what? He's <laughs> I just forgot about fine. him too. Okay, you know what? Most I, okay. Like not not to not to. You know, Seven out of ten of the Straw Hats are perfect <laughs> casting. Not to call people out specifically, <laughs> but no, I'd say that's fair. Eric Vale, I think, just doesn't have the right voice for it either. Sanji is definitely more of like a, a mobster type of guy. Yeah, and he I don't feels like Eric he should be more Bill rough and tumble. Pulls that off, that exactly. It. Although I do like that he can just kind of like switch between the two Sanji modes of cool and then he goes really high for he, the... He can be silly. He's, yeah, he's got, I think, his bits. Sanji's silly voice, right? I haven't heard what Sanji on Whole Cake dub sounds like. Hmm, I haven't what seen that. Cry is. Gotta hear his real moments. But yeah, I, three that you hate. So Sanji, Sanji. I mean Zoro. That's fine for it, but just not the right fit. And Colin Clinkenbeard is a real trooper for dealing with all of Luffy's screaming. And but I just think uh, like the rasp, she has to force it. It feels like. And I'm blanking on the name of the original VA for Luffy. What's her name? The uh, say you. The one? No, the Japanese voice actor. Man, why am I blinking? I should. I absolutely know it. That's not Mayumi Tanaka. Mayumi Tanaka. Thank you. Jesus. I, I, I feel ashamed up, for that. Yes. But Mayumi Tanaka has a natural rasp to her voice that makes Luffy sound like that. And Colin Klinkenbeard just has to force it to make it sound like that. And that just kind of just detracts a little bit from the from the acting of it and can sound a bit grating. So it's just it's an unfortunate circumstance that her voice just doesn't match it. So. But dealing with like Luffy screaming for all those episodes, though, like no, yeah, just, yeah. that's a, still a hell of a job. Either that's way, still a very hard thing to pull off. So uh, it's no less respect for that. But yeah, I'm I'm kind of in agreement where like I I just like the idea of like this is a new interpretation. We should take that opportunity to try new things and take things in a different direction in regards to like just characters' voices and stuff. And also something that like I don't really think about too actively when I'm watching it, but like. I'm ready for some new sound effects. I don't want to hear Dragon Ball yes. Z. Sound oh, that's effects one of the things anymore. that they specifically pointed out because they knew people hated it. But they said when they're re-editing for the Fishman Island, they're going to be putting in new sound effects. Oh, really? I hadn't heard that. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, they mentioned that. <laughs> I was just thinking this specifically for Whit Piece. Hell yeah. yeah I wonder if they're going to have try to have those line up at all. I don't know. The I wonder if they're just trying to keep them separate. Because it feels like Whitpiece someday will catch up with the with the pre time skip all the way through pre time skip. But I'd like Whitpiece to go all the way through so we have one cohesive release. Yeah, you that's know? like like that's really kind cool. of the dream. Well, is it would be nice to have one definitive animated version of One Piece at some point. Yeah, and uh, before I forget, people were talking sake. about like how they didn't want new voice actors for the Japanese cast of One Piece if it was being remade, which I entirely disagree with, mostly yeah. just on the principle that all of the actors in One Piece are are aging uh, quite a lot at this point. Yeah, didn't Frankie's voice actor have to take a break for a minute, too? Yeah, yeah. His, I, and I noticed it, especially when I was re watching some of the Egghead stuff. He's, it sounds like he's got something in the back of his throat because it's just like his throat can't keep up with acting anymore unfortunately it sounds it sounds like at least i don't know he has situation. the most raspy voice in that i've ever heard so i would not be shocked so, uh, if that character forever is killed yeah yeah it's it's just got to be rough and mayumi tanaka is like 80 or something now or yes yeah, she, she still least. does a spectacular job but one yeah. piece is really long yeah, yeah like, they, like with the even with this it. new cut down it's still going to be really long and it's okay 
to be like, hey, you know what? We'll find a, a new voice that can do this consistently for its whole run. Hey, like, you know that's... that thing that you've been doing for almost 30 years? Hey, you want to do it again? <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, you want to start over. 20 more as we remake it? Yeah. <laughs> but do yeah, this when you're triple digits in age. I think it's perfectly fine. And and Mayumi Tanaka even like made like a press release saying like, hey, if I can't do Luffy, please accept a new actor because they're, it feels like they're preparing yeah, like, for that kind of backlash and ahead of time. But uh, like she's she's great. Like it is no, you know, not a criticism to her to just go, hey, let's, you know, let another person do this really long standing job. Just, you know, for, for your sake, really. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I don't know, but especially because it's a theme of One Piece in particular, not to, I, I don't necessarily like using the story as justification for the yeah. mindset, but, but even One Piece as a narrative is like, uh, always focus on the, the new blood coming in. Don't, don't, don't hold Growth tradition and passing of no the torch. Reason. Yeah. The only reason I don't think they do that is, or they, they would also just have to replace them in the, the current one piece is just because like they they take those voice actors to every like big event and have them like with the the cosplayers come out on stage or whatever that's true but i i still think like with toei still running for however long and they're running concurrently i think that's why they're running concurrently and not like waiting for the toei anime to end and then start with peace is so that they can just keep things rolling with it with the old cast as much as long as possible. Mm, yeah, I could I could see that. But yeah, I would I would hope that they can keep, you know, stuff consistent through like if wit piece basically I would hope that if they change actors it is from the jump, but you can also just understand wanting to want to keep people happy and <laughs> at the same time similarly invested. I I honestly would really dislike that. I think it would honestly just be a straight up bad choice and 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 also people are saying you got to keep the OST the same. I love no the OST. No. Like I, I love that soundtrack, but don't do that. <laughs> I, I love a few tracks of the soundtrack. I think some of them are amazing, and a lot of them are okay. The composer is really good, but they're very cheaply done, which I don't, I don't appreciate. So yeah, I'd love a whole new OST. There's a lot of people saying, well, they better keep in what is it G or yeah G eight. Oh, they better this keep anime in the <laughs> only arc better be there. Or like the walk to Arlong Park, which was technically anime only. Like, like people love oh, that one so much. Their, their new anime only thing. Give them yeah, the, it's yeah. like you don't. Toei's toys anime still exists. It will always still exist. Watch that again if you love it so much. You know. Yeah, uh, I just it, I I feel like it's something that I've just kind of always been where it's I hate the mindset of like the fan mindset of like let's see them do the thing they've already done again like and like <laughs> yeah. i mean i know we're taught we're literally talking about a remake of one piece but like to like this specific degree i guess this idea of like no like where at that point it feels like it defeats the purpose of doing it again of making a new <laughs> version of it because yeah. you're so beholden to the old one and it's just like, like the like this is the point the idea is to diverge it is to like split off from this i feel like that's why brotherhood was successful with Full metal. Oh yeah, I mean that was because the adaptation had to skew off from the manga so much, and and then they're like, okay, let's make an adaptation that's faithful to the manga. And same same mindset here. This is why I'm okay with a One Piece remake, is because the first adaptation was not very faithful to the manga in a lot of different ways that I did not like. I'm also curious, like, because this now also has so much like manga hindsight behind it, like any kind of stuff that like might not you know, totally makes sense or things that were sort of like retconned a little bit. I'm curious oh, if, yeah. they'll, if they'll play with stuff like that. Like, I can't think of anything specific right now. My but first I know thought is that, set, like, you know that Shanks and Buggy were on Roger's crew and it shows a flashback to them and the crew is hardly believes that if Devil Fruit exists, which is a, a oh. very weird circumstance. Oh, yeah. What about trees that spawn them and they float around in the ocean and wash up on the shore or whatever? What? Wasn't that a thing? Like they come off of a devil tree? I mean, in the prototype romance Dawn, there was a. That's how the gum gum fruit came to be. Is that. Okay. I thought there was like a theory at the beginning that whenever in the first chapter, it's like they're said to come off this thing. Yeah. I think that might have been just from the prototype or from a weird translation. I think. I think Viz might have mentioned a tree at some point even though that wasn't in the original text like i studied that a lot i was making <laughs> i was gonna make a whole and i i still might 
make a whole hour long video. I scripted it out about all of the romance Dawn prototypes and then the actual chapter and all the details behind it. And I looked up different translations of everything. So, uh, so that might have been the case where Viz just mentioned a tree and they shouldn't have. It. On that, do you think Viz will ever go back and fix anything? Uh, I don't think they will at this point, which is really unfortunate. Because, yeah, One Piece was pretty bad for a good chunk there. The earliest stuff, they really wanted to lean into the Yarhar pirate stuff. Mm -hmm. The later pre-time skip stuff, they outsourced to a bunch of companies to translate it quickly because they wanted to catch up more with the Japanese releases of the manga. And only until, like, the approximately the time skip did Stephen Paul come on, and he's a good translator who's, you know, every translator has some issues with some chapters, but he's very solid and worthy of working on One Piece. So until that point where Stephen Paul comes on, the One Piece translation is extremely hit or miss for, for the entire Viz manga. Yeah, I, I haven't, like, gone back and read like old one piece like i i really haven't read anything back before i started having to read because i had caught up with the anime so like basically any manga pre wano i really don't know the the translation quality or like where different like splits are but yeah because because i know me and because i know i will eventually be like i'm just going to read all of one piece now <laughs> at some point i will i will probably have to like navigate that minefield assuming that yeah. there's just a a big chunk of Viz stuff that's just going to be like, yeah, this is going to read like nonsense for about a hundred <laughs> chapters. Uh, and then it's they'll kind of, it's not get the worst. It's online. like, it, you, you can tell what's happening at the very least, but yeah, it's just, it mistranslated it's a, a decent chunk of crucial tidbits, you know? Like I, I remember getting really mad at the, the drum kingdom arc because uh, for one thing, Chopper doesn't call Kureha Dr. Reen. And so he calls both hero look and Kureha doctor. And you can't tell which one he's talking about at some points. Oh, and they also I never like thought about that. <laughs> yeah. And and later they did change it. Like Stephen Paul translated translates it as Doctorine. So if you're only reading the Viz manga, for some reason Ch Chopper just changes how he refers to Kureha at that point. It's 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 a bit of a mess there. They also call him Zolo. We can't forget that. Yeah. yeah, that'll always be their thing. <laughs> oh, there's a, there's so many like minute details I could complain about forever for that kind of stuff. Mike Knight in the chat saying there's so many flashbacks in early One Piece that the characters have been completely re redesigned. This gives me an idea for Whit Piece stuff. I don't want them to change silhouettes for unintroduced characters. I want their silhouettes <laughs> to not be accurate because I because I think that's way cooler and fits like in a universe perspective of like. You're having this person described to you. You are not going to see their yeah, outline yeah. in perfect, like, silhouette fashion. You're going to see this, like, murky, weird, vague, like, not, like, super specific or clear thing. Uh, so, like, I kind of, like, that's something that I didn't think about, but I kind of hope they wouldn't that's change, I guess. Interesting, yeah. Like, they did that most recently for Loki, like, so. Yeah, exactly. Like, if, <laughs> if, if the Loki shadow we saw when we were getting, you know, whatever her name was that turned him down, like, if we saw how menacing he actually looks in that flashback. It wouldn't I, like, have been I, such a cool reveal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, that would that would weaken his reveal. That would take away from that, like the you know the times when like the emperors are first mentioned or whatever and we see these weird shadows that are yeah, supposed to be big mom, mom or kaido mom. and don't look at like them at all like i like i would be disappointed if we just got to like even if it was just like their outline or whatever like if we got a really accurate big mom and kaido there i feel like that would be undercutting their eventual reveals yeah. <laughs> yeah. On that, I can't wait to see Rox's design. It's going to be completely different. Yeah, oh, I want yeah. Rox to look like nothing like what we've seen. <laughs> okay, can I want to bring this up in front of a crowd of people uh, because nobody nobody is fully on board with me. They just give me a little pat on the head and say, no! "All right, Ben, that's some no! fun little theory. Move along." So, the uh, Rox Dizebeck flag. Have you noticed that his flag? Hold up has hair that is very similar oh, oh up to a certain gear form yeah make sure you put this on screen we need that we need you to yeah, hold on present this theory i feel like this is up there with all those freaking youtube theory channels you've got i think you've got gold here so the make anime this its own thing or short ben <laughs> yeah edit edit isolate this part later so the anime made it look more like horns so a lot of people, like, first of all, just don't even give this any any thought in the mm -hmm. first place because 
It kind of just looks looks like a skull with horns on it. So, but then I saw in the manga with one of the slightly more recent chapters, maybe like a year ago, they showed a flashback, I think for God Valley, and they showed a flag more clearly and it looked more like this. And so what I'm seeing here seems pretty clearly to be a flamey hair on the head with mm-hmm. swirls in it. It's, it's got a it's very it, evocative. You might say it's how could it not be anything other than the gear five hair? I, I don't, I just can't see anything else happening for that. What if it's the darkness? I mean, it could uh, be. It's, a darkness for... it's, I cannot see it as what? anything else. Everyone Why has to agree with me. Why is sperm, Ben? What, oh, <laughs> is that? <laughs> what, mm. what significance is that? Is that a scar, it's a, maybe? It's a scar under his eye, just like yeah. Luffy has. Just like Luffy. Now, see, I do kind of think that we're eventually going to get like a rocks reveal and rocks will not be that bad of a guy. I'm I'm betting it'll be like just his legend was built up so much more and he gathered all of these powerful people around him. But he himself was like kind of just a dude who just happened to be at the nexus point of all of these super powered psychos. I mean, I can definitely see that happening because that is a good twist because so far the only thing it feels like everyone's sure of is that he was a Blackbeard type. So it would be a... But that was never confirmed in any way, so... I feel like basically every time we've gotten the the government or the public's opinion on a pirate, they haven't been right. Like, <laughs> yeah. like maybe sometimes with the super villainous ones, but even half the time they don't think they're as bad as they think, like, Luffy is. Yeah. So it's, like, a thing where it's, like, I think that's going to be the the final nail will be, like, the this legendary bad dude was kind of just okay. He was just surrounded by a really strong crew. Yeah, but Roger yeah. and Garp ended up going toe-to-toe with him. I wonder what that's about. That's just an embellished story. They really fought Kaido and Big Mom. Yeah, Rox wasn't even there. And before Rox is like the the freaking you know, Usopp of his crew. That'd be great. Like he called himself the captain, but everyone kind of oh, followed man. their own orders. That'd be so good. No, he's the buggy. He just fell upward. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, yeah. I also Buggy is I, the true heir to Zebek. Yeah, I also could see something like that. I think that would be great. We solved it. That's good. So everyone, everyone in the chat, everyone in the comments, please agree with me right now yeah, and spread the word. Totally Buggy's hair right there. That yeah, is there totally Buggy's hair. Yeah, he, he actually ate... looks like a jester. That's a jester skull. He's a big clown because he has clown makeup on his cause, face. Because Rock, because Rocks came from the Big Nose Clan. He was the last of his race. Buggy D Clown, his son. Dun, dun, dun. Speaking of Buggy and 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 weird theories that I came up with. We at some point we were talking as a group about like what the different seraphims would have for powers, and I remembered that I wanted crocodiles as crocodile to have buggy's chop chop root. I feel like that would be the perfect combination. Just seeing him react to that is a good <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. It's like, more than anything. I want crocodile to see that. And be, yeah, and be upset about crocodile it. not wanting to associate with buggy in that way it would be a great reaction there. I also think that Buggy's power could be like have limitless potential in how cool it could be. And if an actually menacing figure. Yeah, had if it's someone actually smart behind the wheel, I feel like it could be a very, very good. Have we seen what Don Flamingo and Gecko Morios are? I don't think we have. Okay. Yeah, I think we've I only like... like seen images of them. I don't think we have actually seen them doing anything yet. I mean Gecko the thing Morio's is... power is so good, but he's lazy. Yeah. So I feel like they could just keep his power on him. <laughs> Doflamingo is a paramecia, which is fine. But the re- they can't. Uh, I thought ve- the reason Vegapunk said is that he can't so he use Logia fruits. Right? He can't yeah. recreate those. So Doflamingo is fine. But Gecko Moria, I think, is technically a Logia. I'm not 100% is he sure a about Shadow that. Shadow Shadow? Is Shadow I Shadow a Logia? No, a that's such a weird fruit. I, in my head, my 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 assumption yeah. is paramecia, but I guess I don't really know. Look that up real quick. And you guys, I, I would defer to on anything. So if you're not sure, then backs away from my original thesis. The kage sure. kage no mi. It is a paramecia. Okay. So yeah, they don't need different devil fruits at that point. Uh, it's it's only the uh, logias that really need a different devil fruit power, and people like Mihawk who don't have a power in the first place. All, All right. right. Why not? So if Crocodile's secret isn't he's Luffy's mom, what is the secret (laughs) that... I don't know. I still think it's very... It's almost definitive that he did... He was a woman at some point. Like, I feel like that's... 
it works. Like the mom thing is is fun. It's fun <laughs> meme stuff. But, That's an extra layer on top. But you, but, but you do crocodile think that, that... theory crafting. All right, that, take mm. it seriously. No, I, I, hey, they're like considering the characters involved and the tone of the scene, perfectly, <laughs> yeah. perfectly apt and and capable Look, of being the reality. It's, it's not Luffy's mom. It's Ace's mom. That she never died. Oh shit. Oh, of course. That makes a lot of uh, sense. Pork, pork is de crocodile. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I guess that solves it. Like, I tried to we think don't of see like what else. At, at, at Roger's execution, do we? I think we do. I, In my head, we do, but I might be making that up. That might be an anime thing that I'm. That might be an anime thing. I remember that happening in the anime, but I can't like picture in my head. A manga panel within there. I just remember Buggy. in my brain that's like one of those things where like every character is secretly there. <laughs> like, yeah. And that we're just gonna eventually find out that literally all of the primary characters showed up at that execution. Yeah. Wait, Go Blocker, is that a real theory that Crocodile's woman? That's that's absolutely the theory, because uh in Impel Down, when Ivan Kalv with the hormone hormone fruit, the ability to change genders of anyone is about to release Crocodile from his cell. He says, oh, don't worry about Crocodile. I know what his secret is. And so if he wants me to keep his secret, then he's going to stay in line. So that's, and also just that they they had met long before. It, it just seems like, what, what else, I wonder what else it, it feels could like be. there's connection, connective yeah. tissue there that it could definitely <laughs> work out that way. Like I can't think of anything else. Like Crocodile's past, I did think about it and... I do like that Crocodile was like through context clues and all this stuff, like the cover stories of the of the Baroque works. Crocodile clearly did set out to be like a king of the pirates, and he got in a fight with Whitebeard and lost so horribly that the only recourse he had was to build up a ton of military might so he could take him on again. And that's how he ended up trying to get the Pluton from Alabasta. So it, I do like that. He's this tragic kind of figure where it's just like he had his dream shattered and he always wanted to be a king of the pirates type and uh, he just never could. But I can't think of the anything else. He owned him too hard. Pretty much, yeah. And that's he what he's saying that. a lot of stuff about that in his fight with Luffy. It's just like, I know how tough these waters are. You're you're not good enough. You can't even beat me. He got initial funding for the baroque works from the kamabaka kingdom yeah i wondered if it might really be like something from uh, from the revolutionary army but i can't think of what that would have to do with anything okay crocodile has the big scar across his face maybe he like got you know like his brain swapped to a different body maybe crocodile's really old Ooh. Uh, maybe we've got kind of a Kenjaku kind of thing. Just just looking at Crocodile trying to, to come up with theories of what could the what could the secret be if it's not a gender swap reveal. It is a gender swap thing, but it's not Luffy's mom or anybody's mom. It's Zebek's daughter. I, there you go. Okay. I would also be cool with that. This is a <laughs> who got the, injured the, at God the, Valley. The Zebek princess. We got to get her back to God Valley. I can't wait for this. What about, so I don't feel like I've really talked to you guys about it. What do you think about Garling now being one of the five elders? How, do, how does that sit with you? That, that, that step that up seat, that the moon's that, big? Yeah, that, that seat could be replaced. <laughs> one, that a seat could be replaced. And two, that like he's the guy who does it. That is, it honestly is a perfect move because after Egghead, all of the elders are, are kind of like old hat now, you know? They're, mm. they, we can we can deal with them. Even if we can't beat them, we can we, deal. We with kind them. of yeah, we kind of gauge their power, and it's one of those things where it's like I feel like if push came to shove, our our boys could win. <laughs> Look, I think that Oda has a character design ready to be revealed whenever they fully submit the the evidence that Planet X is out there, and they're just going <laughs> to introduce another old man and maybe kill Garland, and and this old man is going to take his place. Oh, okay, yeah. But I like that he's an intimidating figure, it seems, to even the rest of the elders. He seems extra ruthless, which... Uh, the elders always seemed like old men. Like, it, it just, like, very passive. Like, the mm. whole impression that we always got was, I never even knew if they were going to be fighters before Egghead. Like, yeah. I, I genuinely thought there's a good chance they could just have been straight-up bureaucrats and nothing else. But Garling is... Garland is... Is it Garling or Garland? I, I don't remember now. I think Garland, but I might... I think so. Oh, Garland. All right, but he's genuinely just intimidating from the start. Oh, it's and... Garling. It is Garling. Okay. Well, Garling. Because it's Figureland Garling. That's getting messed uh, up. Yes. And he, the fact that he wants to like shake things up 
and all this stuff now. I don't know. It's genuinely just a lot more intimidating than that any elder could be at this point. So how, all right. So I guess this kind of makes me like think we have all the elders. They have like their weird shadow formy things that we've done that they've done uh, or like their, their big monster forms. The suspicion has always kind of been like, are, is this like connected to emu? Is this a power that emu is giving them? Is this not, a devil fruit thing since it's not introduced that way when we see them like that. So does this now mean Garling has some cool magic monster form? Do you think it's going to be, he's taken the same spider form. Is he going to get his own? I'm assuming he's going to get his own zany thing. Cause it would, it would be really would boring so. if he got, like, the, yeah, just if he the, got just the same thing, but just the rule of not repeating anything is, yeah. it would be in play. It's just, yeah, I think like, uh, all the, they're all cool based power. off of like yokai or whatever, right? Like ghosts. Something like that. I a think. lot of them Do are, or of them some of them are, like but any, Sandworm like, is kind of just like a weird exception to that. So we don't know what kind of creatures is. Well, could are, be there. are they connected to their planets at all? Like, is the Sandworm guy Mars? I can't no, remember their, sand, their connections and their names right now. I think, I think Sandworm's Jupiter. Yeah, I think Jupiter. so. So I don't well, think there's a think, would, would he be a giant rabbit thing? It's the moon. Mm-hmm. Because of the, the rabbit on the moon. I don't no, think rabbits are intimidating big... enough. Otherwise, I would have thought that like, hey, that's a good thought. We could, we could have fun with it. It becomes a big block of cheese. There you go. I also like that Garling is, uh, we always see him as his as his crescent moon hair. And then when he sits down as one of the five five elders now, his hair is in the shape of a star because we see him in the, from exactly mm. straight on for the first yeah, time. Yeah, I forgot about that. Which is very fun. Kind of a fun dual silhouette. Yeah. I also love his, like, his first appearance, he did not look this broad-chested. He got thicker Yeah, with, with his promotion. <laughs> he had that cape on, and it was holding a lot of it back, and he, and he comes out like, hey, I'm shaped like Garp. Yep. I'm always down for it. I'm always down for these giant barrel-chested one-piece designs. So, I know when film red came out that was when kind of like the announcement of like it's bigger than shanks or whatever that's never been said in the manga right so is that no there's never officially been a connection between shanks and garland garling yet that's that's highly speculated it seems like there's no way it couldn't be but yeah well other than like shiki that's like the biggest manga connection thing that they've tried to do with the with movies yeah i think so technically Because they uh, did the whole chapter zero for Shiki, and then he was also in a recent chapter. Yeah. Yeah, Shiki is kind of just like, like, Shiki and Ut are in a weird place because they're technically canon, but everything in the movie is not canon, so it's just like, they just exist as people who never did anything in the re- in the canon timeline. <laughs> Their um, movies just let them be more interesting than they got to be in the reality, basically. Yeah, yeah. and the reveal of Shanks' family name is presumably the first... Just point where it gave canon a movie gave canon information about the comic about the manga, like it's one of those things where God Valley or whatever they found him in a chest. Yeah, yeah. Which did we do? That is in the manga, right? Like that we we do know that happened. I can't remember. I think there was a a special comic or special manga chapter promo that Oda did that showed Shanks in okay in as a baby. Because it's one of those things where I'm curious where since that information hasn't been in the manga at all, I wonder if it will ever be relevant. Like, because everyone kind of just assumes that Garling and Shanks are like this, you know, they're related in some way, shape or form because of the shared name. But like, if they never meet in the manga or whatever, if they never interact or if that is never directly stated, it's one of those things where like, you know, people jumping to the queen is frankie's dad thing where it's like well will it even matter if like these characters can be in the same room and it's never addressed like so it's one of the things where i'm just curious since it hasn't been mentioned at all yet and that seems like yeah i think because it hasn't been mentioned something is is the reason why i think it's going to have some significance maybe not too much because i i don't think oda's ever really thought like a family determines someone's character in any mm-hmm. particular way, which is, you know, I think a good way to handle it. But, but yeah, it's just like they're all, all family connections are always just kind of superficial. The only exception seeming to be Luffy, but even then, like he doesn't know his dad. He doesn't like follow in Garp's footsteps at all. Garp didn't train him in any way. 
what did Luffy really get from his family connections, you know? So it, Garp it's left like... him in like the wilderness or whatever. He kind of you know, <laughs> Piccolo style trained him. Technically, if you want to call that <laughs> real training, being neglectful they is a form of training. I would call it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Still think that Don's like the best mom in the series. Still not related to him. Yeah, proving the point. Pretty good. So yeah, I don't think the I don't think like the biological connect connection matters too much, but I think there's some circumstance of Shanks's like birth and being found by Roger's crew that's going to be significant in some way. I feel like I've just been kind of springboarding different yeah. theory or topic thingies. There's something you guys are curious about or want to uh, get a thought, a feedback. What do you on. think Loki did to get thrown in jail? Ooh. Uh, they, they already said it, didn't they? Yeah. Devil fruit. But yeah, I thought. Why? To get the, well, I don't know what the legendary devil fruit is. That's up for speculation. Yeah. Why? I did hear. Is his dad Odin? No. His dad is someone else. I don't remember what the name is. But the legendary his dad devil wasn't fruit. one of the chieftains that we saw in Big Mom's flash, flashback, right? Th those are like the Maybe? old big. I feel like those are the old pirates. The, I mean, I don't know how the, the, the tribe works. It's there was the, the giant pirates, the pirates versus just the giant tribe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. There's been, there was one theory that was put out there that was fun, that lo the legendary devil fruit that Loki got was supposed to be the Nika fruit, but was actually just a standard a gum gum fruit without the Nika powers. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> which would be very funny. Which is why he's calling himself. Giant. Which is why he's calling himself the Sun God because he thinks he has the Nika fruit. But then when he awakens it and he's able to turn everything else rubbery, it basically does make the world cartoony. And he's like, "See, <laughs> look, I can do it." Also, basically, it's like the same. It's just my hair giants. is not white. Also, it's like the idea that they have giant sea prisms. Yeah, th those I mean, are presumably. huge chains. What if you know his devil fruit is like. You know, he has like like a literal like the sun fruit. Like I don't know how you would exactly word it or call it, but it is just like no, I I ate the sun sun fruit. I am yeah. literally the embodiment of the sun. <laughs> I am like you know maybe not Nika, but I am just the sun. Yeah, Get ready I mean, to deal with that. That's also like some. I yeah, it makes sense. It's kind of a weird crossover of a, of the flame flame fruit, but. I wouldn't be against it. Does the tree get knocked over? Prob maybe. There's like, that big the sword the there. Arc, does the tree get knocked over or cut in half? It's hard to say. I, I think, think we're due for a sunny upgrade, and maybe we get some magic wood from the big world tree. I think you're right. We are due for a sunny upgrade. the The remaining Vegapunks are gonna come flying in, and they're gonna go install me. Ooh. That'd be good. I can't live in this freakish body. This is hell. I'm, I'm <laughs> in pain 24-7. Get me Stop out of me here. in the sunny, please. I still liked the idea that the the devil fruits of all the straw hats, there's like, you know, Gomu is 5'6 for Luffy's gum gum fruit. I believe Brooks oh, the, Yo Mi yeah. Yo Mi No Mi is Yo is is four, I think, and me is three. And Chopper's Hito, Hito is like one and ten. Like, if all the devil fruits are corresponding to a number, and the only ones missing are two and nine, which is Ni and Q, which is the uh, devil fruit for what, Bartholomew Kuma. Oh, so nice. there was like a weird theory that just came about just because of this number thing. And it would be really funny if, like, when Kuma died, like, officially. On the boat, it's somehow the boat got his fruit. It was my fun theory about Ooh, how that could okay. be included. I don't know how the boat could. I don't know if that counts as swimming. Floating does, but <laughs> yeah, we we now need to put yeah, water does. wings on the sunny. But it's, I thought that would be a fun way to incorporate it because I knew uh, I I I personally don't think there's ever going to be another new straw hat after Jinbei. I don't want there to be a new straw. I don't want Jinbei there to be it. one either. So I think that would be just a cool way to incorporate that fun little number thing to it. I'm trying to think of how I would feel about Yeah, I kind of agree about, like, no new straw hats. Like, no new core straw, straw hats, but I feel like we're going to get a thing where, like, you know, Vivi, Momonosuke, Carrot, like, a oh, bunch yeah. of characters are, okay. like, our Vivi... honorary straw hats doing yeah. things and under the straw hat banner. Of course. Like, Vivi is part of the straw hats. She can join any time. Is the thing, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, I don't, like, I don't, I think it gets into semantics to say, to yeah. go beyond, uh, like, describing it that way. They're all allies of the Straw Hats at the very least, and so they can call themselves Straw Hats, but I mean, as far as, like, 
people who are in the crew, like always going on the adventures together and all this stuff, like on the ship and everything. I feel like there's just yeah, never the, gonna be anyone the who's crew, gonna be officially crew added. In will not grow. Yeah. Yeah, I I I I believe I am in agreement with that. Yeah. Yamato is too big for the ship. We can't have that much power. Yeah. Yamato just makes us too strong. At that point, what at that point what could stop him? Nothing. Straw exactly. has to be invincible. We got we got to we got to have some people who can fight on different fronts. Cuz inevitably, especially if freaking Pluton's there, like Wano is going to become a war zone again. Uh, mm. So we need someone like tough who's going to stand up to that. So we're going to have Yamato and the and the scabbards for that. True. Do you think he's gonna figure out how to do the same thing as Kaido and make Onigashima a fly and they're gonna come in for the big <laughs> war and Ooh. I don't know if he like how how long ago was that in the world? It feels like it was probably only a week. Like I like the idea yeah. of Momo training up a bit and being more formidable, but I feel like at least a couple months would need to pass in order for that to be feasible. Also, the other thing, who do you think stole the sword from Yamato? Oh, yeah. For the, oh, yeah. The cover for the story, cover, the cover story. stories. I feel, like, in my head, that's going, like, especially just with how I feel like it's kind of been a thing where it's like there's been, like, the kidnappings or whatever happening in the background, but it doesn't seem like anyone's actively doing anything about it. I feel like it's going to be a thing where it's going to resolve as, like, Oh, it was nothing. These characters ran off and they used this sword as a decoration to celebrate Yamato as Odin or something. Like, it's going to be some, like, kind of played as a joke is my bet. I don't know if it's hmm. going to be a I don't know if that'll thing. necessarily be the case. I'm wondering if it'll be more of, like, a... My first thought was, like, the Kurozumi clan. I wonder if, like, oh, maybe there's, like, someone mm, there. Okay. Maybe, like... I'd, I'd, it'd be interesting to see, like, a bit of, a, like, the fallout for that Yeah, we do need some kind of... That, be like yeah. reintegrated into society properly without having like a bitter grudge again we need to see yamato breaking the cycle basically yeah that's what i personally like to see out of it i'd like that that'd be good yeah and tama is a kurizumi so that would be interesting to bring that up i think i forgot that tama was a kurizumi it was a very very I subtle detail that. that was brought up in an sbs oh but it was it was a, a very interesting answer that oda gave too it's just like yeah, Tama is a Kurozumi, and imagine like if people found that out, how they treat her. Really think about the significance of that and how you treat people based on their family name. It's just like a very serious kind of answer for Oda. It's just like, oh, wow. Do you feel like I saw a running fun theory of who is it that would be judge, queen, and Caesar create like basically a, a new Mads to do stuff? Now that they already do gone, that, basically, did they? Okay, did they already do yeah, that? I that, remember. Was the, that was the previous cover story. It was the birth of okay. Neo Mads. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Judge and Caesar have already gotten together. Is Queen going to get oh, thrown yeah, is in Queen the mix? Be part of that? I could see that happen. I, I, I don't know How if Queen, Queen is straight up killed, but because Queen yeah. got taken by Green Bull or whatever, yeah. But then he got scared away, so I don't know exactly where that led to any of his captives or how that exactly went. Maybe like they Green went Bull's to prison. Goal was to kill them, so it's it's yeah it's hard to say. He may have just straight up murdered them, but we know how Oda can't kill people <laughs> unless yeah. it's Pedro, in which case he will make everyone seem like Pedro's sacrifice was the biggest thing to ever happen. Well, here's the thing. He, I, well, it's, he seems sacrifice more okay with, was the second biggest thing to ever happen. He seems more okay with killing people off screen. Like that happened with Izo and one of the scabbards. Oh, yeah. I don't remember which one. So, and Queen may have died off screen in that case. I don't know. Damn. Off screen and... We're going to off-screen the last Lunarian like that? There is. He's probably not the last. There's probably going to be some, some significance. There's some new ones out there now. <laughs> yeah, the Seraphims are, are out there now, so that's fine. Are you saying they're not people? Uh, they don't have names. Grand, what's not your real. picket sign say? The celestial dragons did nothing wrong. Oh, yeah. Absalom died off-screen as well. Yeah, well, everybody hated either. him. Yeah, yeah, everyone clapped when that happened. You made me forget his name for like two minutes. Ashra Doji. There we yes, go. Yes, yeah, okay. that's the other scabbard. Man, on the topic of Absalom, Dr. Hogback, he coming back anytime soon, you think? Will he have a big oh, yeah. role to play? He's going to save it in, in our last arc. <clears throat> He's going to save Gecko Moria. I am <laughs> curious because Gecko Moria is presumably still alive, right? Like, that, like captured is that, by Blackbeard. Was captured by Blackbeard, but then there was the whole, was it Kobe that was like, hey, you like that Perona was like, you've got to rescue us? I think well, so. Kobe. I think she found him and was like, hey, you have to help me get Gekko Moria out. Where is he? 
And I don't think yeah, that and really, then and then we like never got followed grin. up on that. So yeah. like that's yeah. still a, a dangling thread there. Meaning Gecko Moria maybe saw freaking what what was it? Honesty punch or whatever. Yeah, honesty Kobe's, impact, yeah. 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 Kobe's big I need that dude shadow. Just curious what role he could play in the, in the things that he feels like a character that even in his um, own arc didn't really get to shine. So Perona's so. working with Mihawk, so maybe at her suggestion, okay. Moria will work for Mihawk and be, be part of the Cross Go, Guild. Cross Guild? All right. I mean, Cross Guild seems to be where all the previous poster. warlords yeah, are coming together, is, right? Yeah, is Cross Guild just going to be... Like, I've also seen people comparing Cross Guild as, the, as a rocks pirates equivalent. Oh, like, yeah. Modern era. <laughs> Apparently, and again, reinforcing the buggy being rocks of just like the yeah, it was just some dweeb who had all the powerful people near him. But you know, I I love me, I I love me some some rhyming history. And then Kobe and Luffy have to team up to take him down. Yeah, to take down Buggy at God Valley. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great in a Davy back fight. Boom! There we go. We bring it all together, <laughs> all the pieces. Yeah, apparently Perona was on a, a Beta Cross Guild poster. Ooh! Uh, I don't know where that like came from. If that was like an SBS or like a bonus thing, but yeah, there was like a sketch of that. Like she fits up a fourth slot. I wonder if I can find that real quick. I'm seeing That's a Twitter cool. post, which oh, it was done by just an artist. I wonder, and it looks like it's it's pretty similar to the One Piece style. So I wonder if people got confused mm. from that. I'm just trying to see if there's anything all, else, though. I just nod and go, damn, that's true. I'm not seeing anything personal. Hashtag facts. I'm trying to think, like, I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's just, like, there's so many moving pieces that anything can kind of do anything. Like, yeah. like I, I, I was like, what's Cross Guild's even, like, big involvement going to be? But it's like, they're probably not going to be involved in anything with, like, that bath stuff. But it's we're probably going to have, like, a, you know, reverie check-in type moment where it's going to be, like, and then a bunch of stuff happened off of the <laughs> island we're currently focused on. Uh, and now everyone's in a totally different place than they were. <laughs> so all of your previous thoughts really aren't going to amount to much because all of this stuff happened on screen that you had no idea of. I but... think in general, like the idea of cross guild coming together is just kind of per a perfect way to bring all of these disparate pieces into the final fight for a good reason. Yeah. Because especially with Mihawk, there was, he had no motivation to stand in the way of the One Piece until Cross Guild happened. And so it seems like Cross Guild's just kind of the way to drag in these characters with a good motivation to be in the final fight. Yeah, I love the just the, the exciting nature of all of these pirate crews being like, let's gun it for the One Piece. That's that's like the original premise of the story, and it's so exciting to finally see that again. <laughs> it is cool that characters suddenly care about the One Piece again, our, uh, our titular treasure. It had to take a backseat for a little while because there was big wars going on and stuff. So I guess it makes sense. Like, okay. So I guess that's like a kind of a, a thing I've been sort of curious on. So do we think like the the world government conflict, like, are we going to deal with that before we get to the One Piece? Or is that like all at the same time kind of thing? Well, how, how will, what will Luffy's motivation to deal with it be is my question. I mean, Luffy very much dislikes the government and only the only reason he hasn't like tried to take down the whole system is because there hasn't been an active reason for him to, you know, but he's like, they're so controlling of everyone in the world and he hates that kind of thing. So it makes yeah. sense that he want to take them down. He just needs like, he just needs a face to protect in order to do that, you know? <laughs> exactly. Like, is it going to be that someone he knows is now like, I, I feel a, like the slave the up in marie or they have attacked like because they, they're what if it's this like they're they they've they've started suffocating their their resources and everything the revolutionary army yeah so what if they try to take over like the east blue just for, like, and they just go hey th this area has resources we're gonna just take it i mean for for me my immediate thought is like we we know emu wants vivi for something so I'm assuming eventually he will get his mitts on her mm. and it will be a rescue VV will be like our our big charge the government mm. move. That's Honestly, good, that that's could that theory. could be it like that. Like as, as soon as as soon as we started seeing Emu having interest in VV, that was my immediate thought is just like that's that is going to be Luffy's motivation is VV is endangered by this being. And so it's just gonna be like, well, all right, because you're my friend and 
your you know a straw hat and everything but you know being on the ship like you're one of mine i am here to protect you and if this guy's giving you guff I'm a freaking emperor. I'm going to go get him. Sounds like Luffy to me. But I but like I guess oh. it's one of those things where it's just like in my head it's just like so at that point, you know, our goal is to become king of the pirates to do whatever Luffy's mysterious dream is. Uh, and I feel like I agree with kind of the I don't know if this is quite consensus, but the big running theory of like throw a big party, something something very general that involves the whole world and that's why he needs to be the king. Yep, that's that's the best theory so far that I've yeah. seen. Is just he wants to throw a party with the whole world. Yeah, so something along those lines, which like I think fits. I think that works with the themes. Like so that that goes along. I'm I'm cool running with that. Might be different specifics, but that general concept I think is yeah. pretty sound. And so does that make so getting to the One Piece makes you the king, but that does not necessarily achieve his dream. So does that push the defeat the toppling of the em the emperor of the world basically does that become post we've got the treasure i've become king of the pirates now it's time to set everybody free so we can have this party i think it i always describe it this way oda c accomplishes like a dozen things with the final punch and i think mm -hmm. that's that's that, how that's i hope it's gonna happen be wrapped with this into as it. well one big punch is gonna defeat uh emu or blackbeard or whoever's gonna be the final bad guy i don't I, it, I don't necessarily I kind of hope emu is like somewhat red herring like I really want <laughs> Blackbeard to swoop in and like eat emu and now it's like all that power that had this is now under a dude we know I mean that, that could definitely fit like the thing is we haven't seen any of emu but we've seen a lot of Blackbeard so yeah. I prefer Blackbeard to be the final the final fight but I think like a big punch is gonna do whatever it's gonna do it's gonna just he's gonna punch down into the red line and destroy it and connect the entire world or whatever i don't care but it's <laughs> gonna be but it's gonna be one big punch that gets into one piece that defeats the bad guy that saves a whole bunch of people that just relieves all the tension and then there's gonna be a nice big party at the end because luffy did all that with his one big punch and that's how he brought the world together and got his dream yeah. i had to go find it lax and the black snor whatever lax snor yeah, and the chat said it was on Buggy's new Viver card, and I just so happened to just buy that like a few days ago. Ooh! So I had a picture of it, but it's not a great. It's it's a tiny image, so you can kind of see it. Okay, let Buggy me... on top and Perona's on the right. Let me grab that. So behold. Oh yeah, okay, I can see it here. Just uh, let me put in a big old red circle there for anyone who doesn't see. Yeah, that looks like Perona. Yeah. So yeah, that de that definitely makes sense then. The idea that she Perona gets Gecko Moria and suggests, "Hey, for for all sh our safety and everything, let's join up with Mihawk because he took care of me." And they might be married, according to some theorists. Shanks went to a wedding, and Perona well, lived together for over two years. But but yeah, I do like Shanks the idea. Canonically of them joining. went no to way. a wedding. Yeah, Shanks Shanks went to a wedding. When it was in a cover story. I don't remember that. It wasn't like. I refuse to believe Mihawk is committed to the blade. He would never commit to marriage. You know, he's committed to evasion and tax evasion, so he, like, <laughs> I can believe it. A marriage of convenience. Hmm. Man. Well, I guess as another talking point, I wonder if we're going to start winding down here soon. My voice is starting to give out a bit, honestly. I wouldn't okay. mind doing a shorter one because I, yeah. I just bought a new bed and I still kind of want to run to the store and grab some sheets. <laughs> sure. <laughs> he wants to All test right. it. Uh, well, the last topic I wanted to bring up was for the recent chapters, what do you guys think of the whole situation with the tiny town before reaching Elbath? That they have kind of a the little detention center or that... What was his name? Road? Yeah, yes. Road in the scans, Rodo in the official. Okay. Takes has his own little playground where he takes people and pretends to be the sun god there. Yeah. I think it's silly. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like I'm guessing like I I keep having to like reframe this cuz it's like I feel like I always I, and I feel like I've mentioned this before. I go through this weird cycle with arcs in One Piece. Where at the beginning of it, when Oda's like setting up all of the pieces that will eventually come together to make everything make sense, yep. I always have like this, like, it's like I don't trust him <laughs> when the <laughs> arc starts, because I'll just be like, what is this? This, is, this doesn't seem like it's got anything to do with what matters. Why are you showing me this? Uh, and then like, 
later on it will be like the oh but we only got out of here because those dudes we introduced 10 chapters ago did their thing that we said they were gonna do or something uh, so like in my brain i feel like this little diorama town is going to have to matter in some big way eventually but it's just i can't concoct the reason <laughs> for that yet because it really did like like i kind of like i feel like I'm excited for Elbath. We've had, we've been waiting for this for like practically the whole series, it feels like. But like, I feel like these first couple chapters have not like won me over in a weird way, <laughs> like where I just kind of feel like I'm just like, is, so this is how we're starting the, the arc, the, the island we've heard <laughs> about for decades now. This weird, like, kind of run in with a fake version of it for a minute. Uh, and a dude who like seemed like he was going to be big and bad and scary, but we kind of just got away and dismissed him in a chapter all right okay sure but but like now we've met loki and that has me pumped uh, but like the little diorama town just felt very weird it felt like this like unnecessary leg and like i like i guess it's to split up the the straw hats like to me that's a, like maybe the best utility for that interaction is that now we've kind of got the squad separated yeah i think um, which oh god sorry who's, who's talking me i'll go first Go Do you for think it. Loki has a voice of like whatever? Is that what Luffy was hearing? The voice of all things. Oh, yes. I hadn't thought about that. Or was he just like whining, and Luffy just has particularly good hearing? Yeah. Did Luffy say like, "Oh, I hear something"? I don't remember him. I'm yeah. Do you guys hear the that? There's a or no? He's like, there's a pounding or something. I can't remember what he says. Hold on. Yeah. Pull it I up. heard something. I heard something back in the block country too. A roar. It's got to be coming from down there. That's what he says. A roar. A roar. At least in the scans. Mythical Zoan confirmed. He has the Fenrir fruit. I know that's a running theory. Yeah. Which I'd say in Ragnarok. In general, the the tiny town, I think, was almost solely just to, one, have a bit shock of an entrance because everyone knows a lot about Elbaf at this point. Everyone's preparing a lot about Elbaf at this point. He wanted to make sure there was some interesting way to introduce it that wasn't expected everyone knew it was going to be a big giant island with a big old tree in the middle he wanted to just let's let's try to let's try the best as best we can to subvert that which i can understand and also it's the scale thing because it's you've got them riding a big cat that's bigger than that they can fit all of them and they hop out of this tiny hole in the giant castle which is bigger than any castle you could conceivably imagine. And then you see the bridge going up a tree that's taller than you can conceivably imagine. <laughs> and then only after it's they've been crossing big. that bridge and you see how big the bridge is, compared to the cat, compared to the people, do you see the final shot of the island with the castle being the tiniest little speck at the very bottom. It's, 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 that was definitely all meant to make sure the scale came across as sufficiently huge. Uh, really inform how big this island is yeah and i think so it's just like it accomplishes so much it separates the straw hats and makes sure that the original crew who would recognize vv sign yeah isn't there. so okay yeah so i i we didn't really touch on this at all but yeah i i think that's definitely another big part of it is like we had to get the people who would recognize the x off the boat <laughs> yeah. so when the news came they couldn't go hey that's that thing this is a signal to us yeah and and it also appropriately man makes a scale. i didn't even piece that together that's so good holy shit yeah oh yeah it's great that and vv's doing that fuck yeah yeah because it's because it's, it's, it's the news up so there's they, a visual they, of it. they even mentioned that the x is like not faded in the way the photo is so it's definitely added later yeah for some reason i i, I just i could not fathom what it was setting up and i was just like what the fuck's the government doing <laughs> but no it oh that's so good that's so fucking good yeah but yeah but the feel so conspicuously none of, none of the people who know about the x on the hand bit are on the boat right now so yeah. none of them are none of them are there to decipher this news but you know, just well i don't know depending on what version you watch uh, yeah frankie? maybe what frankie knows about it or who, who was what there was it brooke was already there what i def there's like the there's like the little like special retellings of some arcs and like i think they put at least robin on drum island in one of them oh. it's like a weird like <laughs> oh we kind of mix and match who was in the crew at different points so yeah did I, they already I, have I, frankie on alabasta I, in that one or was it that they just had him for drum island i can't I remember, remember i remember robin on drum island they might have also had frankie but yeah i don't i don't, I don't remember i don't remember any of that non-canon stuff yeah. yeah any of that garbage it's not real i can't wait for luffy to free loki 
foolish, please. <laughs> it seems like that's definitely going to happen. Yeah. N- yeah. Yeah. I feel like this will definitely be a Luffy lets him out, not realizing what he is uncaging or perfectly, absolutely realizing what he's uncaging and being like, no, I've got to, I've got to kick your ass to prove I am who I am. Cause you know, I, it's one of those things where I feel like Luffy has still kind of hit a point where like my head is like, can anyone challenge him? Have we made him already just the strongest? But I feel like, you know, this is a good story. Our characters are going to have to have conflict. So inevitably someone's going to be tougher than gear five. Yep. They'll definitely figure out a way to, I mean, Blackbeard can take away the powers of it. I, I feel like he did a very good job at convincing me Shanks is stronger than Kaido, which I didn't expect mm. to happen before, but it's just like, okay, it makes sense. Yeah, Shanks wouldn't show off his power and therefore would not be well known as the strongest guy in the world. So yeah, he doesn't he doesn't throw his power around, so it's not yeah. gonna be this. Shanks fat. managed to Stop Kaido and then keep and then show up to Marineford. We don't know exactly how that happened, <laughs> but yeah. It was enough to just make Kaido go, no thanks, I'll turn around, that's fine. It's only the biggest war in history, and that's kind of my whole thing. That sounds pretty epic, oh my god, I'll lose, maybe? Okay. Hobby suicide. I know we were already kind of circling drain on last topic, but other, like, last big thing, maybe. How big do you think Elbaf's going to be? Is this going to be another like Wano sized arc? Is this going to be, you know, like what what's your what's your feelers? What's your vibe right now since we've seen how huge this island is? Is that going to entail a huge narrative to go with it or will we kind of blitz through it? Look, the fucking egghead was relatively short and <laughs> that was still like a year and a half. Yeah. So I'm seeing us on here for at least Two years conservatively. <laughs> I, I, I cannot tell. I could not tell when Egghead was ending for the longest time. I don't think anyone could. Yeah, I, I feel it like was Elbaf's gonna like be a similar chapters. situation. I think it's just gonna be entirely unpredictable from this point out. I tried so many times to think, well, this one might be shorter for this and that reason, but it could be longer for this and that reason. And especially because like chapter lengths are getting shorter in terms of page count, it's just like okay, it's just gonna take more more chapters to cover the same amount of story that it would have before. And so it's just like, I really don't know. I, I think it'll be very big. I'm, I'm guessing this will be like, like another huge arc. And then I think we're going to like kind of barrel towards the end. I feel like we're going to have like kind of a, like not a shorter final thing, but like, I feel like this is going to be the last big thing, basically. I I see that. Yeah. This is going to be the last big thing. And then maybe we're going to, We'll have the the road poneglyphs, but they'll see. I I I am just so hype now for the moment where they all see the newspaper, and it's not just <laughs> Luffy reacting to Ace's story. It is all of them seeing this, and then rushing out to save Vivi. Got a rescuer, man. Okay, this is what it looks like. It's a wedding. It's got oh, this flying. is the the it's infamous tr- saw wedding. Does it say Shanks no. is Shanks attends a wedding? Oh yeah, a wedding yep. sir, okay. at a certain ruined a island. certain ruined island. Okay, a certain ruined island. That's that what? was the prevailing. Is this theory. like a roundup, like cover stories? Like, yeah, yeah. What, what was proceeding in? What it's was the Dex of the World five hundred million man arc. So it's when Luffy got his new bounty after Dress Rosa. Okay, this is everybody reacting. Yep. Okay, okay and, and that's. The theory is this That's was Perot the, the Hawk at, at Mihawks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because mm. if you count the number of doves on the right of him, it's the same uh, amount of well, syllables as in Mihawk. The, the cross is clearly his sword. He just stuck that it That is very Mihawk. Uh huh. Totally. Uh, I disagree. The only characters who get married in One Piece belong to Big Mom's family. This is clearly charlotte someone <laughs> marrying somebody okay yeah rendaris in the chat is saying oda keeps saying it'll be done in the next couple of years but we all know how reliable he's been with that he's yeah. actually he been reliable five with years, that five years uh, like over five years ago though yes he did but that's the only prediction that he's gotten wrong and that's only because of all the breaks in the shorter chapters every other prediction has been we there was calculated at some point by i believe a uh, library of ohara arthur and he calculated in every prediction landed at the same time frame except for this most recent one because of the or or except for this most recent set of breaks that just delayed everything which was very interesting to see 
So he was he was right for most of them until he was wrong on all of them because of the delays. So you, so One Piece would have ended. It probably would have ended by now if he didn't have to take so many breaks. Yeah, that's weird to think about. <laughs> I feel like he's only started taking longer breaks recently because he's had the 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 week off thing since the time skip, hasn't he? Yeah, I think so. So at least he's had he's had like three he had the weeks surgery out of the month. Break. And then he had like two more health breaks, didn't he? And those were all on the tail end of Wano, if not an egghead. Yeah, but there was a point in post time skip where he was just consistently like once a month taking a week off. I thought he's been doing that since post time skip, though. Yeah, so he's just been just taking like consistently. More and more I breaks. thought that was just a thing. So maybe oh, he wouldn't okay. have finished it by by now, but he would have been gotten a lot closer because like all the chapters that we have gotten so far have also been, keep in mind, like four or five pages shorter than typical. Which adds yeah. up quite a lot. So we've only gotten, like, of the past 100 chapters, we've only gotten, say, like, 70 chapters worth of content, you could say. In my head, I still feel like we're just going to have a, a big Elbaf tale. And then after that, we'll have, like, kind of... that. That's going to, I think, kind of immediately put us in our, like, final positions, basically. I Well, I, think I so. guess... I guess I keep forgetting there's like the whole Lodestar and Laugh Tale. I like don't think I don't think Lodestar is Yeah, I don't think Lodestar necessary. is going to be a thing. Like we, you don't think it's going to be like a Saba Odi esque? Like we're going to stop off there for at least a while. I think that was no, I think so. I think yeah. I think that's either like I think that's the rush to Vivi. I think that's just going to be Vivi or yeah. the War Arc because that's where like Egg. Who was it? Was it Lodestar where Roger and yeah, Whitebeard so- met up? The reason I don't think Lodestar will be a thing is because at Zo, where we learned about the road poneglyphs, they said Lodestar is where you learn that the road poneglyphs are what's needed to find Laugh Tale. So it's like we got the info. So early. now that we already know what the road poneglyphs are, there's there's no need to go to Lodestar Island. Gotcha. Okay. I forgot. Once, like that the, the real goal is to get all the all four road poneglyphs together, and that's that's presumably going to be happening at Elbaf. Okay. Gotcha. Then yeah. Then I then. I feel even more confident than that we're going to have this big, big, chunky Elbaf. This will be our kind of our swan song farewell to the idea of saving and helping one island or one specific. The the standard adventure stories. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is going to be the last one of those. And then whatever this ends on is going to be the thing that propels us to, you know, getting the one piece and toppling the government in whichever order <laughs> like one like somewhere same in time, there simultaneous yeah 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 yeah. So, yeah same time all with one big punch probably he's gonna take down emu and the red line at the same time yeah like what if freaking like i still like the idea of blackbeard's the one who takes out emu like that's all a conflict that luffy has nothing to do with at the end that and, would and, be fun <laughs> like, I, I i like that idea and then it's just like, but now Luffy has to stop Blackbeard because of reason. And it's just like, he's already dealt with this other big obstacle that we thought we were setting up. Like, it's, it's funny to free. think about, but like, what if, you know, like, we've seen the elders or whatever, and everyone's been like, all right, here's the straw hat matchups for all of the big government players. But it's like, no, the Blackbeard pirates come in and they all get the, <laughs> the, 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 the matchups. And then we've got to deal with the fallout of that or some shit. Yeah, I have no idea what to expect for the final fight. <laughs> there's, there's only my one hope of the Davy back that fight, not a fight. And, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not a prediction. Even it's just a hope, you know, I want that to be like the yeah, like that's like the final conflict that like we will have our big serious war arc. We'll deal with whoever needs to be dealt with to a permanent end because they would there is no way peace would exist if they get to continue acting and then we have the davy back fight with everyone left over who it's like <laughs> you know we might not be friends we might not see eye to eye on everything you might be cool with killing people or something but you know you you still get to exist in this fun cartoony world in canon we haven't had foxy come back right i don't believe so wait there was I know like, he a, like comes we back saw him for like the first time, time post time skip at some point recently didn't we was he in a story or was he Maybe. Or did, did he we... react to news? Yeah, did he react to like the the Vegapunk message? He did in an egghead. Okay, so yeah, so maybe he was. Like, yeah, yeah, it was very recent around the I world. Remember. I don't remember that. Yeah, because he had a weird mustache. That's right. Yeah, art. I do remember mustache Foxy reveal. According to the wiki, Foxy appears to have been fallen on hard times, sailing in much a smaller boat with only Hamburg and Portia. The three are. That's when they were listening to Vegapunk's broadcast. Broadcast. It was going all over the world. Okay. 
Well, did you see them hyping that up? Apparently, like, there's a website you can go to, find all the news. I don't want to talk about it and be wrong. Do you think Foxy just kept losing Davy back fights and that's why his crew is nothing now? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> We need Foxy to get into Cross Guild. He could he could bring that whole operation together. Oh, he he totally fit into Cross Guild. <laughs> Foxy and Buggy are two characters who can never meet. Because then, what what would One Piece do after that? How do you top it? It's like it's like the the meme of the two forklifts lifting each other up to fly. <laughs> they would just infinitely yeah, uh, just amass infinite power. lift on that. Uh. I just can't wait. For Buggy to get the One Piece first and to be the actual king, and he's gonna be it. king in some way or another. He's yeah. gonna no, he's yeah. gonna get it first and lose it, or he's gonna get it last after One Piece or after Luffy One Piece gets it. <laughs> yeah, he gets it after it's not valuable anymore. Yeah, I I I could totally you know it's easy to imagine a situation where Luffy's like, oh yeah, Buggy, you can have the One Piece. I'm done with it. I don't need it anymore. <laughs> yeah, the photographer's gonna show up at the the perfect time to get that up snap the pick of you know? buggy holding whatever the one piece is and just be like buggy gets the one piece yeah i cannot find it but i thought there was a thing going around that was like hey here's a site that telly put up that you could watch these episodes of one piece and it's like set up as vegapunk's message or whatever oh but then you go there and it's like the marines do not want you to see this oh okay so it's like fake blocked like yeah like in I cannot reality. find where I was seeing that though. I thought I bookmarked it. That's a cool idea. Yeah. Assuming it's real. Not to be a butt, but let's wrap this up. I can tell that Mama Dog needs to go out and have diarrhea. <laughs> All right. We've talked plenty about One Piece. All of our opinions are correct, but in case you want to agree with us more make sure to comment <laughs> yeah you can stuff. only comment if you agree <laughs> please no disparaging comments also just like anything you've got thoughts on or things that you think people are overlooking like i i'm always curious to hear what people like yeah. no one's thinking about this detail because oda's such a weird detail oriented guy that there's got to be lots of little hints and tips that we haven't thought about are we setting up like we still haven't done anything with weevil getting captured yeah who the heck yeah. is like, yeah and him being weevil. like potentially a clone a fucked up clone of whitebeard or whatever yeah we have no idea he very well could be but yeah uh, let us or know just if you what want. a clone looks like or a, a son of a clone looks like no clue dude. i love talking one piece so so tweet at me or something if you if you have any one piece <laughs> questions Please. or thoughts or interesting things I just I can't get enough of it. I'm glad we got to talk for two weeks in a row about this stuff. Mm -hmm. We finally got rid of Kieran so we could talk about One Piece. What's we another? Can, we can have like, our own little cute One Piece corner every now and then. Yeah. Okay. I would like another like thinking about it for the one like fan letter. What's another like event in the world that you'd like to see another perspective from? Like, mm. the, the, oh my god, I'm blanking on what the arc is called. Whenever they go and save Robin. Oh, the Annie's, oh, Annie's Lobby? Annie's Lobby. Just other Marines' perspective during that, or... I'm usually not I... into that stuff. I liked the One Piece fan later just as a piece of art in and of itself. Like, I'm not too much into... It could just, like, it's filler to me, kind of. I, it's fine, but oh, yeah. I'm not going to watch it, typically. So I, I probably wouldn't have a good answer to that, honestly. <laughs> maybe maybe a perspective of just, like, seeing Luffy as the bad guy. Maybe some ordinary citizens always get the bad news of Luffy and just assume he's this terrible monster. I want... I mean, this is something that I feel like we shouldn't have because I feel like this is something we're going to go into more later. But I want like the revolutionary is following Luffy. Like I want to see them like mm. hearing about what he's doing and being like, holy crap, this is our time to act. Look what this, you know what? <laughs> look what this nutcase did. Two parter. I want that. And then the other side is one of the people in Buggy's a big top crew, mm. a big Buggy fan. And he's just trying to follow and get That's a good signature. Too, yeah. 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 I want to see the, yeah, the big Buggy fan would also be good. Okay. Well, we know what the next specials are going to be. We've already pinned them. We got them ready for you. Toei, get at us. All right. We're leaving now. We're stopping the video. Good, Good times. So.